Welcome to SBC Insights with Dr. Bill, simplifying SBC and statistical analysis. Today we're going to look at dimming regression. Dimming regression is often used to compare two measurement systems. It's unique in that both those measurement systems has measurement error, whereas in simple regression, typically only the Y response does. Our objective today is to introduce dimming regression. Then we're going to show how measurement errors for the two measurement systems are determined. We take a ratio of them that becomes lambda. We're going to perform the regression, look at the output, and then summarize the results. So customer and supplier have the same test. We're going to use dimming regression to see if it's true. It fits the equation y equals b0 plus b1x. b0 is the intercept, b1 is the slope. So if the customer's test is identical to the supplier's test, that equation is going to become y equals x because b1 the slope is 1 and b0 the intercept is 0. And dimming regression checks to see if these are the possible numbers for the slope and the intercept. First we need to estimate the measurement error for each test to make sure it's in statistical control. We need the measurement errors to calculate b0 and b1. Then we're going to run 30 parts in the customer's test and those same 30 parts in the supplier's test called paired measurements. Then we're going to take that data, run the dimming regression, and reach our conclusions. So we start by using the individual's charge to ensure our measurement system's in control. And we're going to measure one part 30 times in the supplier's test. And you can see the results here. 1.354 for the first one. Then we plot an X chart. And you can see from here the X chart's in control for the supplier's test. No points beyond the limits, and there are no patterns. We can construct the moving range chart now. It's in statistical control. You can estimate the measurement error from the average range. The average range is 0 0.0018. Divide that by 1.128, and you get your measurement error of 0 0.0016. Now you repeat this for the customer's test Y. One part 30 times. Data is shown here. Then you construct an X chart. It's in control for the customer's test, which is good. Then you're ready to make your moving range chart. It's also in control for the customer's test. So you can estimate the measurement error T from the average range. Average range is 0 0.0022. You divide that by 1.128 and you get 0 0.02. Now we're going to calculate lambda. It's the ratio of the measurement system errors as variances used in the calculations of the dimming regression. So it's the variance of the supplier test divided by the variance of the customer test. In this example, it turns out to be 0.64. Now we're ready to collect the data for the dimming regression. 30 parts are collected that represent the specification range, number from 1 to 30. Test those 30 parts in the supplier's test, and then you test the same 30 parts in the customer's test. This gives you 30 paired measurement samples between the customer and supplier. And you're ready to begin your calculations. Here are the equations for BO and B1. If you want more information, please see our SBC Knowledge Base article uh, listed below. So let's look at the output from SBC for Excel. Here's a regression coefficient table. It gives the intercept and the slope, BO and B1. But the one we're going to focus on are the p-values and the lower and upper confidence limits. The question is, is can B0 equal 0? Yes, it can, because the p-value is large, and the confidence limits contain 0. Can B1 equal 0? No, because the b-value is small, and the confidence limit does not include 0. So we can plot the paired measurements along the best fit line. You can see these points are close to the green line on the chart. That means that these two test methods are probably comparable. We can actually test if the two means are equal. That is, is the customer's test the same mean as the supplier test using this T statistic. And we can also test if the slope is equal to 1 using this T statistic, which is equal to B1 minus 1 divided by the standard error of the slope. And here's the output from the SPC for Excel program. Our conclusions are that the slope couldn't be 1 because the upper and lower confidence interval contain 0. The means could also be 0 because the upper and lower confidence for the means contain 0. The two methods appear to be interchangeable. So what we did with the Deming regression is we compare, used it to compare two measurement systems, both had measurement error. We estimated the measurement error for each test, calculated lambda, ran the same 30 parts in each measurement system, ran the Deming regression analysis, and then looked at the results to see if the slope could be 1 or the means could be 0. So this has been SBC Insights with Dr. Bill on Deming regression. Hope you enjoyed it. Click on YouTube subscribe button or visit our SBC knowledge base for 200 plus articles or make your own control charts with our demo. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it.